Welcome to Second Places Unifier, tutorial for administrators and developers. Unifier.secondplaces.net isn't open to the public yet, so as such there is only one login system, but Unifier comes as standard with Facebook, Google, Yahoo and Twitter logins. Um, but I'm just going to log in myself, and I'm going to log in as an administrator, or myself who has an administrator permissions, and you'll see the front page. The only difference between the front page I see as an administrator and the front page your user will see is the amount of options we have on the menu system. I am doing this using our uh, hosted servers, so I'm not running anything local, I'm using a 2 megabyte ADSL line, and I'm using Internet Explorer version 8. Okay. As you see, we have lots of options through our menu system, and we're going to use this tutorial to go through most of them to see how an administrator would set up their world. The first thing people do when entering a unifier, either as administrator or user, is to go to my account and edit my appearance. We use asset-based bundles, um, so when we enter a location for the first time, it has to download everything. Internet Explorer allows you to store 50 megabytes of cache. Other browsers are different. Um, you can manually set that to be larger if you wish. Once things are downloaded in your cache, you cycle through them near instantly. And the same with locations. Uh, a huge location, say 20 megabytes, may take 30 seconds to download. But using the caching system, after you've been there, it takes maybe 10-15 seconds. Um, to move around. Select your avatar, click on save, and that should take you back to your profile, and it should say your appearance has been updated successfully. As this tutorial is more about administration and system management, we won't be going into any locations just yet, we'll be seeing how to modify the system to get there. Every user has a profile where they can go in, add information about themselves, about their interests, um, date of birth, gender, and even give themselves a profile picture. They can change their passwords, and they can see their own profile. If they go into My Resources, they will see a place where they can upload images for dynamic texturing. Um, so if you have a texture that looks at a website, you can actually load up the image here, so that when the image gets changed here, it dynamically changes the world. So if you have an art gallery or something like that, and you wish to change the image, you don't have to reload the location, and it works instantaneous. Those people that are there, as soon as they see it, will see the image change. Also under my resources we have user asset uploads. This is a way to upload third party applications like Word or Excel files and multiple people can work on them at any time using voice or text chat or even putting it on a screen so that everybody's working on it together. Manage friends allows you to go in and add friends, do a search for friends, do a search by their interests. Once you find somebody you want to be a friend with, you send them a friend request, they will receive an email to accept your friend request, and once they've accepted your friend's request, your friends, and when you go into locations, you'll be able to see where your friends are in other locations, all within this world. The last option under My Resources is Manage Groups. In Manage Groups, you can create groups of people, search for people to join your group by using the member search, and you can send group notifications. So if you're holding an event for a bunch of people, you can send them information, and they can get it either through email or when they log in, and you can even send in deep links, so to say to a group, we're going to meet everybody at 5 o'clock outside the church, and press submit, they'll get that information and the link directly to that church. User management is a feature very much going to be used. All it is is a huge list. As the number of people grow, the list will grow, and you can use the browser's own search facilities to find users. And here you'll see at the moment they have three options, either forum, system, or full. And what happens here is if they have a tick on forum, it means they can administrate the forum. If they have ticks in system, they can look at system management. And if they have a tick in full, they can actually create users, configure the whole system. So. You can make this configurable to people you trust, however, when you give system or full permissions, they have also permissions to delete lots of stuff, so make sure you always have backups before you give out these permissions. We now look at system management. There's lots of options in system management, so we'll just go through them very quickly. When you go into edit system settings, you'll see lots of options that you can configure. 
most of which configure the world, the chat, the front page, the way voice works, and really the, the whole feeling of the system. And we'll go through that right now. So the first thing right at the top is general settings. In general settings you have Windows title, Unifier version 2.7 beta launch, and that's what comes up with tabs at the top left hand corner of your browser. We also have recovered login, so if people forget their usernames and passwords, they can type in uh, their email address and it will send it to them. So of course you require an email address for that to work. At the moment, self-registration is disabled. Um, this is because unifier.sitplaces.net is not live at the time of this demonstration. However, when enabled, you can have people registering through the unbuilt registration form, or they can register through Facebook, Twitter, Google, or Yahoo. Shibboleth authentication is used when trying to uh, merge the user system of Unifier with a user's own uh, user system. Uh, this requires a little bit more customization and not something we expect the administrators to be able to do straight away. The next option is multiplayer features, text communication and voice communications. There may be a time that you don't want people to be able to use text or voice if you're doing an event or a meeting uh, and maybe you have a key speaker and you don't want people talking over them. And this is a great way of making sure that people have to wait their turn or leave text on, voice on, off uh, and vice versa. It's just to make it more customization to what you want your event to be. The next option is forum settings. At the moment, this world has their forum enabled, but access public read access is disabled, which means only those registered will see the public forum. Disabled forum topic after abuse report. Built into the forum is a report abuse, so if somebody records an abuse due to a post or something they deem inappropriate, it will disable the forum. Um, so nobody else can add to it and send an email. This can be enabled or disabled, so it's entirely up to the administrator. The support system is a ticketing system that all users have access through the web browser, where at the moment it's enabled, if they put in a call or a help desk, it will send an email to this email address. Um, we also have the ability to add frequently add questions, you can enable and disable that, and part of the system is for you as an administrator the ability to add your own frequently asked questions. Report abuse settings for the actual virtual world is disabled. Um, this is not enabled on launch, but the idea would be if somebody bumps into you or tries to run you over with a bus, you can report abuse and an email will be sent to, us, to an administrator and they can deal with it. Below that is message filter settings, where at the moment we have the profanity filter disabled. Um, you can set a profanity filter and you can add words to it yourself, and you can set it active for certain times. So if you can say your world is um, PG, you can enable this and put in swear words, words that you would deem inappropriate for your world. The last two options, user settings, interests. This is a way to actually add to the list of the profile so that if you as an administrator wants to know if people are interested in certain objects, access, certain hobbies, you can easily go in here and add a new option. Just call it anything you want. If you're looking for love, for example, and submit it. It'll come onto the administrator panel and when users go into my account to edit my profile, will now have an option to select that they are interested in love. The bottom setting is home page settings. This enables, disables what's possible, what's seen on the front page when people load up the world. At the moment, we have a few things set up, so you can leave messages, you can set up notices, slideshows from RSS, and you can enable and disable and actually show how these notices appear. And once everything's done, you just click on update, and it'll take you back to the homepage, where you'll see any changes you've made of now. 